Dear and respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the biggest blessing, which is the Holy Quran, taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, and in it is inspiration, guidance from Allah. And with regards to families, the most important unit in society, the family unit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us beautiful examples. And with regards to the family, there is lots to do and learn from the inspiration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَآلَ عِمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم الله سبحانه وتعالى lots of ayat beginning by obey Allah and his messengers and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد say obey Allah and his messenger if you do so and Say, if you love Allah or claim to love Allah, obey me, follow me. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمُ اللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah will forgive your sins for you and Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Say, obey Allah and the messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then after that he begins... إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمْ Allah has chose and made special Adam وَنُوحًا and Nuh Adam عليه السلام Allah created with his own hands خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ Nuh عليه السلام the first messenger to mankind to guide them after they started worshipping idols وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمْ and the family of Ibrahim وَآلَ عِمْرَانِ and the family of Imran عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ so this, these are special families and special individuals Adam, Nuh, individuals families, Ibrahim, family of Imran the third surah in the Quran the second largest surah in the Quran Surah Ali Imran, the family of Imran so let us get inspired by the family concept in the Quran if the whole surah is called Ali, family of, every tahiyyat we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. So there's a reminder of family in every single rak'ah or every single salah that we perform. What about the family that inspires us in the Holy Quran, in the story or the surah of family? The family of Imran. Allah says, ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِن بَعْضٍ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is most hearing, all hearing, all aware. So we need to understand that. That concept in a family needs to be present. The concept of Allah is hearing my words. Allah is hearing my tone. This with regards to everything. And we can specify it how we choose. Allah hears how I speak to my husband. Allah hears how I speak to my wife. Allah hears how I speak to my parents. Allah hears how I speak to my children. Allah hears how I speak to my community members because we're a larger family now. Allah hears how I speak to the larger society and behave, not just speak. But this is just for starters. Wallahu sami'un. Alim. And this phrase is repeated throughout the story of Maryam and Ali Imran. If qalat imra'atu Imran, and Allah takes us to a moment in the life of a righteous family, actually one of the most righteous families in history. 
in all of mankind from Adam to Yawm al Qiyamah. This is one of the select and few as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and mentions. What did she do? A moment in the day of the family of uh, Imran. According to Tafsir ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he says that she couldn't bear children. So Imran is married. I believe her name was Hanna, and she couldn't bear children. And she made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after one day passing by a bird that was playing in its nest with its small chicks. And she felt this motherly yani, need or feeling, natural feeling of wanting to reproduce and feeling the feel and experience being a mother. So what did she do first thing? The righteous people, what do they do? She made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we as families, in addition to our awareness of how we behave, Allah Sami'ah, He, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is ever hearing, and Alim, even the things we don't say but we are thinking, Allah is aware of it, whether it's negative or positive. If قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم. Oh Allah, my Lord, I designate what's in my womb for you to completely learn and serve your religion, your faith, your deen. Please accept it from me. And then she says the same phrase again. Innaka anta, indeed, surely you are. As Samia, ever and all hearing, Al Alim, ever and all knowing. So we need to have that concept as adults, and if we have it, then we can give it to the children. They also at young age, the first things to teach them before reading and writing. Allah is watching us, so when we pray, we pray good because Allah rewards us more. Rather than you go to hell every time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears us. So when we read the Quran, let's read it beautifully. And you can read Fada'il Qiraat al Quran, the virtues of recitation of the Quran beautifully. And Allah has them in the elevated in the level of angels. When Yaqra al Qur'ana, huwa mahirun bihi ma'a safara, is with the angels. And this is how we can use these, and I'm giving you in practical terms. So when we raise our families, A, we have to have it. We can't be parrots. We can't regurgitate information. That is not effective. Or not the most effective way. We have to have it. It has to be in us, in our life, in our hearts, in our wujdan. We really need to be able to believe our faith, understand our faith, practice for ourselves, not everybody else. Practice our faith, and then we inspire others around us starting with our families so when we have that awareness of Allah and look at, looking at it بحتساب, we are anticipating we are anticipating rewards from Allah blessings from Allah it's not always negative yes it's a balance between the same story the same family and they, Allah describes them in the plural. What did they used to do? They used to make frequent dua to us. Allah says and speaks of himself in the royal plural from his might and majesty. And he says, they used to make lots of dua to us. Raghaban with hope and anticipation of our rewards that is. Warahaban and fear of our punishment. And likewise should be the approach we take as adults, as family members, as parents, grandparents, and then that's the concept we teach our children as well. Because we understood it. So we have to begin with ourselves. Tayyip. Oh, my Lord, I designate to you what's in my womb to serve and learn your deen. For you. Purely for you. Please accept it from me. You are all hearing, all knowing. Another thing, we need not to only focus on dunya. It is foolish to focus on a temporary trip. We are here. This is a test from Allah. He put us here liyabluwakum to test you. Ayyukum ahsan amala. Who's going to do better and more beautiful good deeds? This is this is it. But Allah made this test 
extended. Just like your MCATs, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى They take 12 hours, or your LSATs, or your ACTs, or SATs, they take a certain time. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us X amount of days, hours, or years. And He is the most merciful, so the test isn't sitting down on a chair, and you're only allowed to drink some water or juice. Allah made you comfortable. Allah gave us night, day, rest, eat, enjoy, marry, reproduce, lots of blessings. So Allah is the most merciful. So when we, when we understand Allah is most generous, most merciful, don't just memorize it, understand it, feel it. يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ أَفَلَا يُبْصِرُونَ We have to actually think about our deen. It is not just the qualitative, the quantitative, how many we're reading, how many we're learning. It's also the qualitative. We have to understand. Wallahi, if we just work on understanding and implementing sincerely for myself and not worrying about others. Don't sit. Sometimes shaitan tricks people that are trying to practice the deen. What you have to do, they have to do. No, no, no. I have to do. Because when I point to everyone else, I forget about myself. And Allah is not going to ask me about everyone else. He's going to ask me about me first. And then he'll ask me about those who are dependent on me. Those who I'm supposed to inspire, teach, nurture, guide, protect. Those people Allah is going to ask me about next. But anyhow, focusing not only on the dunya. She focused on making her daughter not to be the most achieving queen of the world. She didn't say, oh Allah, make her the richest woman in the world. Nothing wrong with wealth if used correctly. She didn't say, oh Allah, make her the tallest, most beautiful, handsome. She didn't. Allah subhanahu she said, for you, to serve you. So we need in our children to kind of implement that in intention with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have create first, and then have designate our children to learn. All of us have to learn a minimal amount of our deed. There is no excuse. We have to go abdaful iman, the weakest of iman for our children in weekend school. And that is not the default. The default should be in full-time Islamic schools. There they will learn Bismillah from a young age before they eat. The morning dua before they start the day. They will know how to say it. Their teacher is going to say Alhamdulillah after they're done. You'll never hear that in a non-Islamic school. And much more. It's important to do that so we actually have given them the opportunity and environment that will nurture their deen and their connection with their creator because in societies that don't connect you with God directly, you will not have that. And it isn't fair that we put our children in a, a community or in an environment that is, I'm sorry, that does not remind them of God. We have to at least bring them on the weekend if we can't afford full-time schools. And that's another topic. For those of us who cannot afford full-time schools, it's on us who can afford to help, to help our Muslim brothers and sisters that can't put their children in there so it doesn't become elitist schools. But that's another topic. So we need to designate to learn our deen. And it, could, it needs to start with the bare minimum and then also think a little bit further. All of us have, mashallah, five children, six children, some more, some less. How many of us designate any of our children to be a hafiz of the Qur'an? Or a alim? A scholar? In the deen? Because there's so many elements that make us have or look negatively upon that line of work even though we verbally say it's amazing but our actions don't put much investment in that path so she actually did that and then she asked Allah to accept and then she started to make dua فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ So she named, she gave her birth, she was surprised it was a girl because she assumed it was going to be a boy just because traditionally men served and learned the deen and were scholars so she was surprised and she says uh, and I name her Maryam. And the fuqaha, 
the scholars have extracted from this and another other hadith that you are we are permissible to name our children on the day of birth I know there are a hadith on the seventh day do this and do that but there are a hadith as well on the first so it's permissible to name from this ayah particularly to name our children the first day they're born you don't have to wait seven days and the Rasulullah did that when Allah gave him when he was around 60 years old Allah blessed him with a young boy named Ibrahim and he said he walked out after he was his, his wife Maria radiallahu anha wa anhunna ajma'in our mother Maria she gave birth to the Prophet's son Ibrahim he walked out and said لَقَدْ رَزَقَنِ اللَّهُ بِوَلَدٍ وَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ he said today Allah blessed me with a, with a son وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهُ عَلَى اسْمِ أَبِيهِ إِبْرَاهِيم and I named him today and I give him the name of his great grandfather Ibrahim so we learned today Allah blessed him with a son today he named him Ibrahim so we can do that and there's no contradiction you want to wait seven you can but if someone wants to name the same day they can as well so anyhow so much to learn before we even continue naming them a beautiful name is important naming our children a beautiful name and give them a name that has meanings a meaning or also ha names of people they can look up to in the future my name is Muhammad who's Muhammad that is Muhammad my name is Fatima who is Fatima she is Fatima my name is Maryam who is Maryam this is Maryam instead of naming things that don't make any sense again you're free to name whatever you want Islam doesn't restrict our names in general unless it goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's teachings but why name them something that is insignificant when we can name something beautiful and significant and of substance in addition to that also the inferiority complex that's another topic we can talk about not today many times we find we don't value what we what Allah blessed us with in our tradition a lot of times and that's post-colonialism effect you find that light skin tone more preferable than dark skin tone these are the remnants of colonialism straight hair better than curly hair uh, green or yellow colored eyes better than brown eyes this is colonialism's effect you find that anywhere that was colonized and even if it's post we still have some remnants of that and including you know the highly educated have uh, go to lingu linguistic schools or Al-Madaris al-Haditha, or Madaris al-Lughat, or whatever, never their own language is kind of looked down inferior. Culture, their clothing, oh no, no, this is better than this. Why should it be better? It's different, it doesn't have to be better. And likewise, their cuisines, likewise their faith, likewise their, and so many other things. So it's important that we actually don't have that. And that's regarding naming. We continue. She says, And I seek refuge in you, O Allah, to protect her and all of her offspring from the accursed shaytan. So we need to learn. Before we even have children, the qualities and sifat of Ibadul Rahman in Surah Al Furqan. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا The servants of the most gracious, the most merciful Allah, Ibadul Rahman, Allah describes their qualities or some of them and one of them he says, and those who say, our Lord provide us with spouses and offspring that are joy and coolness to our eyes and make us leaders for the righteous so before having children before even getting married always make this dua oh Allah give me righteous off a spouse and give me righteous offspring it is important to make that dua then when you give birth or your wife gives birth then immediately we make that dua you don't have to memorize those words if they're difficult but for starters ask Allah to protect him or her and their offspring we have to be people that don't just 
give birth and have children just like any other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the deer in the wild or whatever don't want to use other examples no offense but we have to actually use this inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these examples are not in there for us for storytelling purposes the, every single word every single phrase every single part of it is teachings and lesson, lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said hudan lil in it surely is guidance for the muttaqeen dear brothers and sisters <coughs> making dua for our children is extremely important Making dua for them even before we conceive them is extremely important. Making dua, learn the sunnah of marriage and the traditions of and the teachings of Rasulullah regarding spousal and intimate relations. We make the dua so so forth. We need to make dua as Allah gives us that child. We need to make dua after that child has been born, as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam used to make dua for his children after he put Ismail alayhi salam and Hajar alayhi salam in the area, the uncultivated value, bi uh, valley, biwadin ghayri li zar inda baytika al-muharram rabbana li yuqimu salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim wa rzuqhum min al-thamarat la'allahum yashkurun These are duas that we need to make for our children, all inspirations in the Qur'an. And we need to raise them the way Rasulullah sallallahu raised Anas and Fatima and Zainab and Ruqayyah and Umm Kulthum and Ibrahim alayhim jami'an as-salamu ala nabiyyina salatu as-salam We need to look into those things to raise that and be inspired by that. We get guidance from X, Y and Z but we fail to get ample guidance from Allah and His Rasul and those are the most beautiful example for us لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا It is so important that we actually go back to the example of Rasulullah and all the teachings that Allah put, us, put for us in the Quran Wallahi I only recited maybe two or three ayat and I didn't do them justice to explain to us just some very light touch on how we should be inspired to start to be inspired how to run our families, how to raise our children. And then there's so much more on how to treat our parents. In return, because parents don't get treated before the child grows. They're not to be treated back yet until the child starts to become of age. So we, there's so much work to be done by the parent or parents. And then in return, the child starts to give back to the parents and react and give the fruits or God forbid otherwise from all the different yani, input and sowing that we had sowed so in the years past. And then if we do so, then the response would be, قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصالح من الصابرين. When Ibrahim عليه السلام, that's another one, right? We just mentioned in the ayat of Surah Ali Imran that we just read that Allah chose the family of Ibrahim as well. We didn't finish the story of Imran nor the story of Ali Imran or Zakaria or Yahya or Isa. We didn't get there yet. There's so much to learn, but just to jump around in the future, so you actually are anticipating rewards for what you're doing, not just in Jannah, but rewards with your own eyes to see your righteous offspring be righteous. When we treat our children with love, affection, and care, and give them this guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best guidance, then the return will be just like Ibrahim's example when he raised Ismail. And Ibrahim was over 80 some years old when Allah gave him Ismail alayhi salam. And then he spoke to him, this is an old man wise man Allah described him as ummah none of us are ummah and he is guided by Allah he has in wahi that re revelations descend upon him Allah ordered him in his sleep to sacrifice his son Ismail so he sits with his son and says ya bunayya he uses we have to learn the Arabic language to best understand the Quran you can still read the translation of the meanings in tafsirs but it's most beautiful if you understand what Allah says directly Ya Bunayya Oh my young child Tasgheer Oh my young boy 
It doesn't say, ya kaza or ya kaza. It doesn't say to him the way sometimes parents think they have the right to do that. No offense to parents. We have to, if we want Ismail, we have to be Ibrahim. If we want Ismail, we have to be Ibrahim. So he says, oh dear ch young boy, young child, in most loving way in the Arabic language, I see in my dream a command from Allah to sacrifice you. What do you think we should do? This is a, an order from Allah. This is a wise old man. This is a young boy. And he is sitting and having consultation. He's consulting. He's hearing. He's asking his son. And there's another qira'ah. فَانْظُرْ مَذَا تُرِهِ What do you advise me? What do you tell me I should do? None of us are getting direct commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahi upon us. None of us are over 80 some years old with a young boy child. None of us. Yani, and then we don't even consult oftentimes and treat our children with love and affection this way. If we do that, and he obviously was righteous in his own self, then the result was, Ya يَفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Ya أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Dear respected father, again using the, the, the most nicest phrases, do what you are commanded to do. سَتَجِدُونِي إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Inshallah, you will find me among the patient ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us raise our families like all of those righteous household leaders raised their families. May Allah help us raise our families the way Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam raised his family and the way Sayyidina Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam raised his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us raise our family like the way Sayyidina Imran alayhi salam wa zawjatihi they raised their families.